right? You flip it into comfort mode. Um, what that comfort mode is going to maintain this tank reservoir temperature at 39. So anytime you hit the hot water, whether it be uh, outside on your outside shower connection right here, your Sagiba, or inside uh, through your sink, you're going to have instant hot water. Right. Right. But just know that when you fire this thing up initially, don't expect to have hot water like instantaneously. It's right. not, it doesn't work that way. So while we're out here and we have hot water, and this is your water fill here and your sink drain. So I'll show you this now. This is super easy to use outside shower. Bullfinch or Sagiva. It's actually made, it's made by Sagiva and, and uh, distributed through uh, Bullfinch. Right. So you plug that in and you can hear. So a little bit of hot water went into this line and you can already hear that firing up yep. to compensate for that, right? So you guys here, hot uh, water, adjust it here, to cold, whatever you want. Yeah. So you can probably, you might even be able to see that flame in there right now. That's how quick that fires up. Yeah, it's, that, that's, I don't think we're going to be able to see that on the, uh, with the camera. It's, once it's got hot water in it, yeah. and you start using more, it's, it's really quick that it's producing more hot water. Yeah. So, well, so there you go, folks. Uh, the, uh, it's good to know that once you're using your outside shower more, you'll know exactly where to set it because water's precious, man. You only got 20 gallons in this thing. Right. So while we're out here, I'll show you this. It's yep. going to be your 30 amp shore power plug. Roger. Goes direct into your red arc. Yep. And this is going to be your solar plug in as well. If you have a tabletop one, yep. whatever, right? Yep. It'll come with an end. That's It'll be correct. compatible with that. Yeah, just a two pin. You bet. Right. So that's basically how that water system works in there. We'll mm -hmm. go through a little bit more in there. Uh, we just got a test propane tank in here right now. It's going to come with a much, much larger one. Yeah, it comes with the uh, marine horizontal 20 pounder. Right. And it secures with that uh, stainless fastener you can see there right in front of the tank. Just put my hand on it right there. There you go. Beautiful. Awesome. Uh, so this here is going to be, this is how oh, you're hooking up to your truck. This is an Anderson connector. So. Um, for newer vehicles, this is going to be, uh, this blue wire here, this is going to be for a smart alternator. So that's going to regulate uh, how fast your battery is charging off your alternator. Okay. Based on what you have for a vehicle. And of course your battery charging wires and then a, a wire for your marker lights on your camper. And of course the Manager 30 uh, will only allow 30 amps back to the camper at any one time anyway. So. That's right. Yep. Um, okay, so we can go back into the camper here. You bet. More things. So now we've turned this heater off and we're done with hot water. So super simple. Go back to your, your icons here. This is already off. That's for your heater, water heater. Simply turn it to off. Now you're not going to get any power draw out to that heater now. Nice. So that's really simple. And then there's also a air circulation. This is just for venting. So that's just gonna blow yep. ambient air. Yeah. You know what else works really good? What's that? Opening up a window and starting the fan. That works too. <laughs> that works too. Yeah. Which brings me yeah. to the 10 speed fan. There which there is two of in this particular unit. Yeah, they come standard with the one at the rear. And then you can optionally get the one at the front as well. Right. So this is a 10 speed fan. Uh, cool part about these is that they have a little button here and uh, that'll set automatically to 78 degrees. So you want to keep it 78 comfortable, you turn yeah. that on and it's going to, it's going to draw air out as soon as it feels it's getting warmer than that. Cool. So, uh, let's fire that up, go through a couple speeds and turn it off. These draw out air really, really quick. It's a small space, right? Two fans, you're cooking, it's beautiful. We'll turn that down. These also have, of course, a max fan shade on them. Yeah. It's important to remember this right here has to go in all the way yeah. for this to work, right? Yeah. So that latches. Um, and that also locks it in there for travel too. Right. These can be, both of these LED lights can be controlled independently. Nice. From a switch on them or of course the switch on the control panel. Yeah. Um, that one shade cover at the front, um, there's a little black button on it, you can see it, and that'll give you uh, some ambient light. It's kind of a blue light. Right. Yeah. Perfect for when you're in bed, right? Yeah. Turn that off. 
Now that's wired in with the fans, so that Correct. that that light doesn't have any. There's no switch for that other yeah. than this here. So, if you didn't option the secondary fan, that shade with the light would be back here at the back of the camper. That's right. All right. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention too, of course, in these fridge lead models, a lot of people are running a uh, a cooler. Yep, an that's right. Cooler. All right. So you've got another 20 amp. 12 volt socket right there. You got her. So both of these 12 volt sockets are wired together. 20 amps fuse. Yeah, perfect for a cooler. Yep. Uh, down here is your liquid propane CO2 detector. So those all come tested and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, one amp fuse for that. Um, I'll just do a quick. I see the footman loops there on either side uh, of the bench for securing your uh, cooler. Yes, that's right. So I'll show you in here if you guys can see. Uh, we're providing this this guard here, and that's simply just for your storage. You don't want things flying around in your water lines and stuff like that. So that can be easily removed. Three ten twenty four bolts, and you can access anything in there. All you have in there is your water fill hose, your sink lines, and also winterization valves. Yeah, one way valves for your outside shower. So and your propane stuff is all up here. You should never have to touch that. Cool. Um, so this is just storage down here. This plate here, this we provided for a aftermarket inverter. Mm -hmm. So you can take two bolts out, and this is going to be a perfect spot to mount it. That's right. Any inverter, really. You know, yeah. uh, these are super cool, and this is this is really handy too. I got the bolts in here now. This is your battery tray. Yeah. That just slides out. I think you could put three. 100 amp hour batteries. We've got one in there now, but there's lots of room. This this goes all the way to the back. Yeah, so you, you got, got lots, lots of room. room there. That's right. Yeah, people ask that question all the time. So right, uh, not a big deal. And also for height, you're good up to. I uh, can't remember the exact height it is, but uh, if you got 170 amp hour AGM, you're good to go. No problem. For sure. Uh, what's missing here is there's actually a, an aluminum cover that goes over top here, but we're, for the video, we just don't have it in place. Not a big deal. Right. What's that black switch for? That switch there is for your tank level light. Oh, so, nice. Of course, it's lit up in here pretty good right now, so you might be able no, to see that. See it. Yeah. So you got a sight glass here, and there's also one that goes underneath yeah. your sump floor. Yeah. So that works pretty well. See where you're awesome. at with water. Cool beans, man. Um, another thing too, of course, all of the tanks come cleaned and everything. This is your. This is gonna be your strainer on the pump. So you know, over time, there's a possibility you may get something in that yeah, strainer. Depends on where you pick up your water, what yeah. kind of container you're using. Screw that out. There's a little filter in there. Yeah. Clean it out periodically is a good idea. Yeah. And down at the bottom there, it might be tough to see from here, is your ball valve for your drain. That's just going straight out the bottom of your camper, right here. So I'm just gonna should be able to see that. Um, the it's kind of glitchy, uh, but it's a it's a red handled valve. You can't miss it. Right. Follow the line; it goes through the floor. Right. And this little valve here, brass fitting. Yeah. That's going to be for your winterization. So we'll go through that. That's super simple too. Perfect. When you're going to winterize, all you're going to do is change this valve to that position. That's yep. going to prevent antifreeze from going into your tank. That's right. That so that becomes. Whatever the reservoir is hooked up to that, that cap is, is just, that brass cap is just put on there finger tight. Right. It uh, doesn't have to be wrenched on there or anything like that to any specific torque spec. Just hand tight is fine. And so that reservoir being the plumber's antifreeze, that'll be the, uh, you'll be lined right up to the uh, suction of the pump. Right. And on that note, I'll mention this since we're on the topic. You are winterizing your unit. This valve here is yep. the exact same as what you have down there. To prevent your antifreeze from going into the hot water tank which of course we don't want what we're going to do is turn that into that position mm -hmm. so both of them are going to be horizontal and you're ready to winterize of course the, the the antifreeze is only going in there that's all you have to worry about yeah so we'll go over that in a separate video on the winterization right but i think that is probably about it but if you got the gas cooked up as long as you got your propane bottle hooked up yeah that's super cool too these are the new suburban stoves that we're using Okay, now um, we also we also um, use Dometic uh, cooktops as well. It really depends because COVID and everything, supply chains are just upside down. So we take what we can get. Right. Now this guy uh, in particular has a just a double A battery for the igniter. Yeah. So that's handy. Okay. Uh, so if that were to stop working on you, if you come under here, 
Yeah. It's kind of tough to see, but it's just at the back of the unit and you can access it just like this. I think it's just one AA battery is all it is. That's hard to see with the camera, but uh, nonetheless, not a big deal. Right. So Perfect. I think that's it, Joe. I think you've done a wonderful job. Awesome. Uh, thanks very much for the tour of everything. No problem. Um, we, ex we really appreciate that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can always give us a call here at the factory or give your dealer a call. They are extremely knowledgeable on the systems inside your Campex and uh, would be more than uh, willing to help you out with anything you might have. Thanks very much.